A Proactive Crusade It is clear from the facts presented in this book that much more needs to be done than abolishing the Federal Reserve. Although that would be a great victory for economic and personal freedom, unfortunately the creature has siblings, and they hunt and feed together. There is an income tax designed to eliminate the middle class, a school system more concerned with politically correct attitudes than with education, a controlled media that corrupts the news, controlled political parties that create the illusion of participating in our political destiny, and the UN rapidly absorbing our military and economic sovereignty. We are not likely to slay one of these creatures without the others. We must eradicate the species. The species is collectivism. Collectivism is the concept that the group is more important than the individual, and that government is justified in any act so long as it is claimed to be for the greater good of the greater number. That is the foundation upon which the Federal Reserve is built, and it is the foundation for literally every other modern assault against our liberty. Collectivism is the enemy of freedom, and we must launch a proactive crusade against it. Not to do so is to surrender without a fight. The first step in this crusade is to spread the word. Americans have allowed their nation to be stolen from right under their noses because they did not understand what was happening. This is not just an American phenomenon. The same theft has occurred with minor variations in every advanced nation of the world. There is no hope for the future as long as that condition remains. Therefore, the starting point for any realistic plan for survival and beyond is an awakening of America and the world. Unfortunately, that will not be enough. Education is important, but it makes little difference that we know if we don't do anything with that knowledge. It has been said that knowledge is power, but that is one of the greatest myths of all time. Men with great knowledge are easily enslaved if they do nothing to defend their freedom. Knowledge by itself is not power, but it holds the potential for power if we use it as a guide for action. Truth will always be defeated by tyranny unless people are willing to step forward and put their lives into the battle. The future belongs not to ideas, but to people who act on those ideas. What will be required for victory? Defeating the global powers of collectivism is a big order, and we must be very clear on what will be required. Here are the realities. 1. There is not much that can be done by one person alone. We need lots of help, and it will have to be international in scope. National efforts will continue to be important, but collectivism is entrenched globally. The whole world is now our theater of conflict. 2. We need a core of dedicated men and women who are prepared to devote a major portion of their lives to this mission. Much more will be required than merely supporting a political party or subscribing to a periodical or writing letters to politicians. The time for armchair patriotism is over. 3. We need a comprehensive training program to expose the tactics used by agents of collectivism and to show how we can ethically counter them. 4. We need the same support mechanisms that our foes have long enjoyed. Coordination, strategy, training, communications. Any plan without these elements is doomed to failure. 5. We need an organizational structure that cannot be subverted by our opponents. It must be designed not as a pyramid with all control at the top, but as a hologram with each of the smallest units able to create the entire movement from the bottom up. 6. We need dependable funding to support the many services needed for organizational activities. 7. We need a clear statement of positive principle. It is not enough to know what we are against. We must also know what we are for. 8. We need a strategy not for petitioning leaders, but for becoming leaders within our respective countries. 9. We need the long view of history, realizing that our mission may not be completed in our lifetime. What we set in motion must be larger than ourselves 
and it must have momentum into the future. Conclusions and Summary We have finally come to the end of this book. It was not a textbook on banking theory. It was a whodunit, and by now you know the answer. We have covered a vast expanse of history and have wandered far afield from our main topic. It was necessary. Without the larger view, the case against the Federal Reserve System would have been weak. It would have omitted the elements of war, revolution, depression, and fraud. Without that long journey, we would be limited to a sterile discussion of interest rates, discount policies, and reserve ratios. That is not where the body is hidden. In the foreword, it was stated that there were seven reasons to abolish the Federal Reserve System. It is time to repeat them. It is incapable of accomplishing its stated objectives. It is a cartel operating against the public interest. It is the supreme instrument of usury. It generates our most unfair tax. It encourages war. It destabilizes the economy. It is an instrument of totalitarianism. The purpose of this book has been to demonstrate the accuracy of those assertions. A plan for recovery was finally presented which involves 16 steps, each based upon lessons which emerged from history. These lessons were mingled with a large amount of theory which is traceable only to the mind of the author himself, which is to say there is no guarantee the plan will work, but it is a plan. It is better to fail trying than to do nothing. Like men on a sinking ship, we must risk the water. We cannot stay where we are. There undoubtedly are technical flaws in these proposals, for the mechanism is merely a prototype. Someone surely will discover a gear that will not mesh or a lever that is disconnected. It will need the additional work of specialists in many diverse fields. Even then, the job will not be complete, for it must finally be handed over to those who are skilled in drafting legislation. Their task will be twofold. First, they must make it workable in the real world of politics. Secondly, they must prevent loopholes and vagaries which could eventually subvert the plan. But none of these considerations should deter us from beginning the process. We may not have answers to all the technical questions, but we do have an answer to the big question. We do know that the Federal Reserve System must be abolished. Let us therefore begin. The creature has grown large and powerful since its conception on Jekyll Island. It now roams across every continent and compels the masses to serve it, feed it, obey it, worship it. If it is not slain, it will become our eternal Lord and Master. Can it be slain? Yes, it can. How will it be slain? By piercing it with a million lances of truth. Who will slay it? A million crusaders with determination and courage. The crusade has already begun. Hi, this is Ed Griffin. I hope you enjoyed this spoken rendition of my book. Perhaps enjoyed is not the best word because there's nothing more disturbing than the discovery that a banking cartel now virtually controls American politics. The reason you may not have been aware of that before, or at least the reason you didn't hear it on the nightly news, is that this same group also controls the major channels of communications, including the nightly news. Now, people who know nothing of this hidden power find it difficult to believe that their sources of information are controlled. Yet every single day their opinions are being scientifically engineered by the screening and twisting of news. It's for that reason that in October of 2005, I began the publication of my own news service called Unfiltered News. As the name suggests, my mission was to bring together in one place totally unbiased news and commentary. With the help of a mighty little staff which scouts a wide range of news sources from around the world, I expand the headlines of each story to include an analysis of its significance which in many cases is completely obscured by the details. Even if people don't have time to read all the articles in full, they'll have the essential information just by scanning the summaries. So this is an invitation to receive a free subscription to Unfiltered News. 
When you sign up, you'll also receive an audio download of my 90-minute live presentation on the Federal Reserve. This is our all-time best-selling CD. But when you sign up for unfiltered news, the download is free. To take advantage of this offer, go to realityzone.com. The Reality Zone is an online store that offers over a hundred books and recordings on topics such as this. It also publishes unfiltered news. When you arrive at the Reality Zone homepage, you'll see a banner that will take you to the enrollment form. Look for the phrase, Zone Dwellers. That's our nickname for subscribers. Listening to the reading of a book is a wonderful way to experience great literature and works of nonfiction but it doesn't allow the listener to examine footnotes. In most cases, that isn't a serious matter. But in the case of the creature from Jekyll Island, footnotes are an important part of the message. That's because of the controversial nature of the book. If an author is presenting a popular view of events, he doesn't need to document anything. But if he's writing an unpopular view, skeptics will say, Oh, I don't believe that. It can't be true. Because if it were, I would have heard it on the news. Well, under those circumstances, a writer had better provide solid documentation and include ironclad references every step of the way. That's what I knew I had to do when I began to write this story. And as a result, just about every page includes multiple footnotes relating to sources. Most of them are primary sources, which means they're the written works of people who participated in the events being described. In other cases, they come from those who support the Federal Reserve or who actually are employed by it. So for serious students, and especially for skeptics, these references are part of the message. The best way to judge the credibility of the creature from Jekyll Island is to acquire a printed copy and examine the footnotes. In summary, I would like to give you a free subscription to Unfiltered News, a free audio download of my presentation on the Federal Reserve, and an invitation to acquire a printed copy of The Creature from Jekyll Island. All of this can be done at realityzone.com. Thank you for listening. We hope you have enjoyed this unabridged production of The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin, read for you by Mark Bramhall. This program was directed by Bob Dion. Executive producer, Ryan Van Barneveld. Text copyright 2010 by G. Edward Griffin. Production copyright 2013, audiobooks.com, Incorporated. All rights reserved.